a small bone at the human, end of the human vertebral column. It has no present function. And it's thought to be the remainder of bones that once occupied the long tail of a tree living ancestor. That is simply a lie, folks. It is not true. Why, they, why do we allow the kids teach, teachers to teach that stuff? I don't know. Let me get to a few of the, uh, what happened here? Oh, here we go. A few of the rebuttal thing here. Let's see. Oh, went too far. Um, here we go. No, wrong one. There, some points made. He said evolution is supported by an overwhelming number of scientists. The majority opinion means nothing in any argument, okay? The majority opinion can think the world's flat and can think that, you know, if you take your blood out, you get better. And the majority for 2,000 years thought big rocks fall faster than little rocks. And it's not true. They thought the planets go around the Earth. And that's not true. Fossils are the key subject. There's a huge number of fossils that have been found. I agree. But none proving evolution. Fossils exist in the present. You can put an interpretation on them if you want, which is what happens with the evolution theory. 99% of the species are extinct. I don't know if that figure is correct or not. That depends on how you want to look at it. But still, that's the opposite of evolution. Extinction is the opposite of what you need. You need lots of new ones coming on. They're not organized, by the way, clearly, like as we see later. Simpler, simpler creatures are lower in the fossil record. That's simply not true. All sorts of animals are found in all sorts of layers. Okay? There's quite a mixing of the fossil record. Carbon dating is good for 50,000 years. Uh, well, carbon dating is uh, fatally flawed. We covered that for an hour on video number seven. He said some of the people in Darwin's time said there were 20 separate creations. Darwin did indeed properly argue against a false teaching that was going around in his day. I don't teach that. This is a straw man, okay? I don't know any creation, creationists today that teach that. There were some people in Darwin's time who said, if there are 20 kinds of birds, then God must have made 20 kinds of birds. 20 kinds of finches, or 14, whatever it was. Darwin was correct to try to refute that particular false teaching. But nobody today's taught, nobody's taught that for over 100 years. So to bring this up now is a straw man, okay? It's not being taught. I don't, I never have taught that. Did Noah allow, no, he said Noah did not allow dinosaurs in the ark. He discriminated against them. That's not true. I said earlier, Noah did have dinosaurs on the ark. I believe he took reptiles, which are, uh, dinosaur means terrible lizards, what the word means. How much rain to cover the world? It's taking 11 inches per hour. This is another straw man argument. He's assuming that all the rain comes from, the, all the water comes from rain, number one. The Bible doesn't say that. It says the fountains of the deep broke open. Most of the water came from inside the earth. Secondly, you don't have to cover Mount Everest. Mount Everest wasn't there. The Bible says in Psalm 104, after the flood, the mountains arose, the valley sank down, and the water rushed off. I don't know how much rain there was, but it didn't have to get, he set up a whole straw man and say, well, take 11 inches per hour, and that would produce X number of thousand calories and all that kind of stuff, the um, two to 6,000 degrees, and it would cook everything. This is setting up a straw man and attacking it. I don't know anybody that says that, and in the creationist viewpoint, most of the water came from inside when the fountains of the deep broke open, and that's why we have all the fault lines today. The earth is busted up into plates. He said he's looked at fossil footprints that are three and a half million years old. They're like ours, but they're smaller. Well, if you find put footprints that are like ours, what should you conclude? Uh, a human walk there, maybe. A lot of people studied those footprints in Lake Tolly and said, boy, if we didn't know they were so old, we'd think, we'd think a human walked here. One professor studied it. He studied 70 people that go barefoot all their life in some village out in Africa someplace. They never wear shoes, ever. And he said their footprints that they make are exactly like the ones in Laetoli. Okay, well, you found some footprints fossilized in the ash. They're assuming they're three and a half million years old. That's baloney. They're not three and a half million years old. Nothing is. He said marsupial creatures are found in Australia. I agree. Marsupials tend to be less aggressive. I've been to Australia. You can walk up to the koalas and they'll, you know, pick them up and they're cuddly to some extent. I think... After the flood was over, when the animals got off the ark, the less aggressive ones would continually be driven to the fringe by the more aggressive ones. And then as the water slowly came up, as the ice caps melted, I believe the ice caps probably lasted 200 years after the flood. If, the, if there was ice caps clear down to Kansas City, Missouri, the oceans would be lower by a few hundred feet. And now you can actually walk any place in the world. There are underwater land bridges everywhere. Between, Alaska, between Australia and Vietnam, the water is 50 or 60 feet deep. Between Russia and uh, Alaska, the water is 60 feet deep. The English Channel, the deepest point in the English Channel is 150 feet from here to that back wall. I mean, it's not like we look at the ocean and say, wow, it's deep, you know, it's blue, it must be deep. No, there's a lot of real shallow parts. So I think by just having larger ice caps during the flood and after the flood, there would be lower ocean levels connecting all the continents. The kangaroos had probably a couple hundred years to walk or migrate to Australia, and it just happened as the ice was melting back and the water's rising, they ended up trapped. That's a much more logical explanation than to say kangaroos came from a rock 4.6 billion years ago. He said he wants to replace a coherent, logical story. Evolution is not coherent nor logical. There's no evidence for it whatsoever. 
based on millions of pieces of evidence. I would like to see the best evidence anybody has. Just show me the best one anybody knows of for evolution. Bring that up during Q&A, please. Level of honesty. Uh, yes, I think if somebody uses information that's been proven wrong years ago, they're liars. Ernst Haeckel said that the embryo growing in the mother has gill slits. That was proven wrong in 1874. Anybody that knows their biology knows that embryos do not have gill slits. So don't tell people they do. They're lying to tell them they do. Symbiosis can evolve. Well, you can dream about that. It depends on, I guess, how, how intense of a level of symbiosis you want. Evolution's a religion. In inferences and conclusions drawn from fossils. Again, fossils don't count. Answers in Genesis. I am good friends with Ken Ham. I love his ministry. I sell his books. I link to his site. He doesn't like me for some reason. That's fine. The, and I, he said, I use arguments that are dishonest. For instance, Darwin's deathbed conversion. I have never used that. I defy anybody to show me any time in my seminar where I've used that. D Answers in Genesis is correct. That argument should not be used. His wife, Darwin's wife, apparently made up the whole story about him converting on his deathbed. The story's not true, and I don't use that. As far as Huxley and his morals, well, let me show you what Huxley said. Since I get accused all the time of, uh, oh, oh, hang on here. That's, uh, Huxley said in, uh, now, it is correct that I had uh, the wrong Huxley. I said Thomas Huxley. It was actually his grandson. Um, grandson Julian Huxley said, I suppose the reason why we leapt at the origin of species was that the idea of God interfered with our sexual mores. He said that on a television interview. Uh, Julian Huxley, the head of UNESCO, he said the reason we like this evolution theory is because it interfered with our sexual mores. We don't want God telling us thou shalt not commit adultery. Professor Ruse, Michael Ruse, University of Guelph said, Evolution is promoted by its practitioners as more than mere science. Evolution is promulgated as an ideology, a secular religion, a full-fledged alternative to Christianity and with meaning and morality. I am an ardent evolutionist and an ex-Christian, but I must admit that this is but one complaint, and Mr. Gish is but one, one of many to make it. The illiteralists are absolutely right. Evolution is a religion. This was true of evolution in the beginning, and it's true of evolution still today. Uh, Arthur Keith, who wrote the foreword to Darwin's 100-year anniversary book, uh, anniversary publication, said, Evolution is unproved and unprovable. We believe it because the al only alternative is special creation, and that is unthinkable. Uh, Professor uh, Louis Bonheur said, Evolution is a fairy tale for grown-ups. The theory has helped nothing in the progress of science. It is useless. Malcolm Muggeridge said, I'm convinced the theory of evolution will be one of the great jokes in the history books of the future. Evolution is a dying religion. And all religions die hard. I mean, when they, pay, when they burn people at the stake for daring to suggest the Earth was not the center of the solar system. And as evolution slowly dies in our culture, you're going to see real vehement attacks. I mean, people get fired from universities like this for daring to question evolution. It's a dying religion, folks. You ought to get off the bandwagon, OK? Evolution, scientists who go about claiming evolution is a fact of life are great con men. The story they are telling is the greatest hoax ever. In explaining evolution, we do not have one iota of fact. Fred Hoyle, famous astronomer from Europe, said the only way life could have come into existence is because some superintelligence having created it. Well, we could talk for hours on this one. Let me get back to where we were if we got a few seconds left here. Okay. Um. Let's see. And get to where we were. All evidence has been proven wrong. I stick by my guns. There are no beneficial mutations. But it looks to me like he wants it both ways here. He wants to say seven generations of inbreeding will wipe out the variability. And then he turns it around and says, there's not enough time to get all these variations we have. I think he's arguing out of both sides of his mouth there. Oh, um, I cover, let's see. I did not get into um, some uh, levels of uh, some other, <laughs> some other examples of lies in the textbooks that are used to support the evolution theory. How much time? Textbooks tell the kids that the whole